you, uh, Ishan, for this uh, introduction. Uh, just one uh, small nuance uh, as per your presentation. Uh, I would prefer to be a midwife than a child. Uh, you are the ones who are pregnant. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm the one that can try and make it happen at the right and in the right conditions. And now, surgery is not my preferred option, as you know. Now, thanks a lot for inviting me to uh, deliver this uh, keynote address on an issue which, of course, as uh, Ishamba just said, uh, is extremely critical and timely the unprecedented events in the Arab region have uh, truly uh, been uh, transformative uh, in scope and in reach. And this uh, Arab uh, spring, or whatever season you want to choose, has reminded us of the uh, importance of one fundamental economic variable, uh, which is uh, employment. And particularly in the Arab region, uh, Unemployment, uh, especially among the young, the youth was, was, and uh, remains a uh, major uh, socio-economic, hence political challenge. And this is also a growing concern in many parts of uh, the African continent, uh, with an increasingly uh, youth-based uh, population. Now, in a way, uh, it's an unfortunate reality uh, that the Arab states lag behind most other regions in uh, creating full, uh, productive, uh, decent employment, particularly for, for women and for the young. Uh, over the last two decades, uh, this region has had one of the lowest employment to population and labor force uh, participation uh, in the world. Uh, according to a recent report released by the ILO, one out of four Arab uh, youth is unemployed in a region where uh, unemployment rates uh, were already very high and uh, growing. Uh, the uh, Arab labor organization uh, concluded in a recent study that the level of unemployment, especially among, again, young is uh, currently estimated to be uh, around uh, 20 million. In some countries, uh, youth unemployment uh, is uh, to the tune of 30-40%, and especially for young women, as uh, reflected uh, by the uh, 2 to 3 uh, ratio of uh, male to female uh, youth unemployment rates. Now, Against this backdrop, uh, there is an obvious and pressing uh, need for improving the employment situation in the region uh, by creating more and better jobs. Uh, and that can be done uh, through uh, promoting uh, entrepreneurship, uh, business, trade in the region. And as in most developing countries, uh, small and uh, medium enterprises can play an important role in contributing to job creation, to development at large, which is why uh, the uh, ITC uh, is involved uh, in this uh, topic, its target being not the sort of classical uh, multinational uh, operators of trade, but small uh, and medium uh, businesses which we all know are the ones that provide most of the uh, employment uh, creation capacity. Now, despite this reality, which is that small businesses are the ones that create most employment, small businesses are also the ones that face a uh, number of challenges, uh, including uh, obstacle to trade, uh, tariff barriers, uh, non-tariff barriers, which prevent them from moving into uh, valuable uh, export-oriented uh, industries and moving up uh, the value chain, which is what increasing job is about. In fact, given their small size, uh, these enterprises are more vulnerable to sudden changes in tariff than others, uh, and this is why the certainty, the predictability that the multilateral system 
offers is of extreme importance for these traders, in many ways much more important for them than for large uh, multinational uh, companies. So the multilateral negotiations are not just about uh, esoteric uh, machinations or uh, cumbersome systems uh, that uh, you realize when you've reached the 30th floor, uh, but rather uh, translate into uh, dollar and cents uh, on the ground. Opening up borders, lowering trade and tariff barriers, increasing transparency in uh, trade facilitation procedures all give small businesses the opportunity to access new markets and to become uh, more competitive. Now, coupled with uh, these uh, continued existence of tariff and non-tariff barriers, one of the reasons why uh, small businesses in the Arab regions are not still able to take advantage of the opportunities is because they very often do not have an exportable offer which is competitive uh, in international markets. Weak uh, productive capacities, inadequate uh, domestic business environment, lack of institutional support, uh, limitations in key areas for trade like uh, packaging, uh, branding, uh, quality, certification, uh, marketing. You will uh, recognize uh, words, topics, focuses, uh, which are precisely the ones the International Trade Center uh, is uh, focusing on uh, as a important uh, partner in uh, aid for trade, i.e. this uh, international uh, effort which we in the WTO coordinate uh, to help building a more productive uh, capacity on uh, the uh, supply side, which is precisely these small businesses. I think this region is still looking for a proper strategy for aid for trade. Uh, we, of course, have been already working in recent years uh, with important actors, the Islamic Development Bank, uh, the Islamic uh, Trade Finance Corporation, but clearly and that's one of my messages today, uh, there is room for more, for more improvement and for a better coordination between what some countries in the region do and uh, the uh, regional or global organizations. As uh, Isham mentioned uh, a moment ago, one of the characteristics of this uh, region trade-wise is a very low level of trade uh, integration. Uh, this is uh, largely due to uh, historical reasons and to the fact that many countries in these regions uh, have had for a long time a trade structure heavily determined uh, by uh, energy trade, uh, which uh, as we know, uh, are a major part of uh, the trade of this region and one of the reasons why it hasn't gone that far in terms of diversification. We know the roots of that, but we also know that this uh, needs to be addressed. The regional trade integration, if you take the uh, perimeter of the uh, Arab League, uh, is roughly uh, 10 to 11 percent uh, to be compared to the uh, 60, 70 percent of uh, intra-regional trade in uh, Asia, uh, in uh, Europe to the 40, 50 percent of uh, intra-regional uh, trade uh, in North America or even to the sort of 30, 40 percent of intra-regional trade in Latin America. So the Arab region together with Africa, by the way, and for reasons which are similar, which is a sort of classical uh, colonial uh, pattern of trade uh, with uh, developing countries exporting uh, raw material, whether energy or minerals, and uh, uh, developed and advanced countries uh, doing the uh, added value, i.e. the job, is still, still very prevalent uh, in uh, this region. And there are many things that need to be addressed in order to cope with this problem, starting with obstacles to trade within the region. 
like, for instance, uh, the uh, Gulf Cooperation uh, Council, uh, started doing it among the members of the Gulf Cooperation Council with, I must say, uh, quite uh, impressive uh, results uh, in uh, recent years. So we know, we have the numbers, we have this sort of empirical evidence uh, that show uh, that regional integration can have a very substantial direct and uh, indirect uh, employment uh, creation uh, on the economy. And I've looked at the background uh, paper which the uh, ITC uh, has uh, produced for this uh, panel discussion, uh, and I think it clearly demonstrates the potential benefits of uh, trade integration within the region, the possible effect it could have on employment, particularly for uh, young people and women, and the sort of welfare gains that uh, are potentially uh, in uh, there, as well as identification of the next step, which is which uh, export sectors have the uh, largest scope for creating jobs and sort of unleashing uh, the uh, entrepreneurship uh, potential of uh, the youth. So to uh, conclude these uh, brief remarks uh, on a uh, concrete uh, note, what measures uh, need to be uh, taken to uh, stimulate uh, trade and growth health and employment, hence employment uh, in the region and uh, ensure uh, that the private sector uh, becomes a more uh, powerful engine of uh, economic growth. Uh, first, I think it's essential that the private sector drives this process and is uh, fully involved in shaping uh, trade policies and trade negotiations. There is including in this region, very often too much distance between the reality of what businesses who want to expand uh, face uh, in terms of uh, uh, trade uh, obstacles and what we official trade negotiators, trade wongs, trade policymakers uh, are cooking every day. So we need a better connection between the concrete problems which uh, uh, ex exporters find and what we do. And in many ways, the International Trade Center is the proper bridge between this reality on the ground and uh, what we do at a global level. Second, I believe that uh, it's urgent for this region that uh, aid for trade uh, becomes a more institutionalized element in your trade and uh, development vernacular. Uh, this region is still lagging behind in aid for trade as compared to others. Uh, and we know, because that's what has worked for the others, that uh, aid for trade can help to uh, bolster uh, productivity and help businesses uh, to engage more in uh, global uh, markets, including in this new reality of today, uh, which uh, are uh, in global supply chains. Third, governments uh, need to keep creating conducive framework for the private sector to conduct business, to uh, be competitive, uh, and uh, trade facilitation uh, is probably uh, one of the best ways to do it. By trade facilitation, I mean a simplification of the numerous administrative and red tape obstacles which, if you are an exporter, you have to pay for if you want to push your trade. Uh, the overall cost of pushing trade, average worldwide, is 10% uh, of international trade which means 10% of $1.8 trillion. Now, if that 10% was to be reduced to 5%, which is the purpose of the trade facilitation agreements in the WTO, there is a big pot of money of 5% of this $1.8 trillion available. 
I think such an amount uh, deserves uh, consideration, hard work, knowing that at the end of the day, the ones that would benefit most from more trade facilitation are not, again, <laughs> the big multinationals who can afford a heavy uh, lawyers uh, team, but small businesses for which these small but repeated obstacles are very often as important as a, a wall of a tariff. And I'm saying this uh, under the chair of uh, Hisham, uh, which I know is an important and uh, dynamic contributor to the trade facilitation negotiations in uh, Geneva. Uh, fourth, uh, trade uh, must be uh, efficiently mainstreamed in national development policies, including uh, employment generation policies. Seeing, advocating, outlining uh, this very, very important connection between talent and employment, outlining this in uh, national, regional dialogues, uh, will uh, help to ensure that these two areas are mutually supportive. I know full well that in some constituencies, opening trade is uh, seen as a threat for employment, which it is sometimes. But overall, the experience shows, the numbers show, the reality shows that at the end of the day, trade opening is overall a win plus situation. Now, not always a win plus only. This win plus is the sum of a, a win a plus and a minus loss. True. When you open your economy, you will have to adjust, and part of your economy, uh, which is the least competitive, uh, will have to adjust. But the experience proves, again, the numbers prove, that in doing this, at the end of the day, you add more value to your economy, and value addition is uh, largely about uh, job creation. So those are my few thoughts. Uh, I, uh, as Isham just said, uh, I'll have to leave to join an other event, uh, but let me put this on the table. Uh, submit uh, these views uh, to my uh, colleagues, uh, panelists, uh, so that a few of these uh, uh, competitiveness challenges uh, appear. Uh, I think they are there. They need to be confronted. Uh, the experience elsewhere shows that uh, it works. So if it's worked elsewhere, uh, my conclusion is that it is going to work for this region as well. Thank you.